This is a car stereo head unit with an Android operating system. And in this video, I'm gonna hook it up, give it a test, and let you know what I think about it. This model was sent out to me by the manufacturer. The company is called ESGO, E-S-S-G-O-O. -O. I have no idea how they pronounce it. ESGO, ESGO, beats the heck out of me. I really wish these companies would reach out to somebody here in the US and ask them about what they should name their product because it's kind of hard to sell things when people have no idea how it's pronounced. In this video, we're gonna go over this head unit. We're gonna check out its quirks and features and then generally see if it's worth you spending your money on one of these inexpensive head units. Let's talk a little bit about what comes in the box with the head unit. Of course, you get the unit itself. We'll put that out of the way. And it comes with various cables and connectors. The first one is the very standard car audio connector that we're all familiar with that has all the various industry standard color-coded wires right here for hooking up speakers. So it's a four speaker connections, front and back, left and right. Then it has these other connections here. Black, yellow, and red are of course industry standard colors. Black is the ground. Yellow is the constant power or the battery positive, some people call it the red, some people call this the ignition. This is basically a turn on wire. This is used to tell the radio to turn on, whereas this is always connected to power. That's gonna plug into the back of the unit right here in this position. Right above the fuse is where this plugs in. It also comes with this power cable, which the instructions online called it an ISO cable. That stands for International Standards Organization. And so what you've got here is a standard size automotive connection plug. Beyond that, there's no other information about this plug. If you've got a car, and the factory connections will fit this plug, then you might be able to use this plug. However, there's no information on how that factory radio or factory connector is pinned, and so you'll need to verify that it is pinned the same way. Most of these ISO plugs are pinned with the speakers on one section of it. You can see here it's in two sections. And on the other section, you've got your power ground and accessory. All the other connectors you might need are not connected. So if one of these needed to be plugged into the factory harness, this doesn't really do you any good. So I'm kind of on the fence on why we need this harness right here. I would rather just buy a aftermarket adapter from wherever you want to buy your adapter. I'll give you a link below to Skosh and Skosh sells the adapters you need in order to connect this into a car. It comes with a trim plate. So that trim plate after you get it installed will go here, it comes with a little bag of screws and it comes with these two mounting pieces. There are two screw holes on each side. Now, if you have some European cars, some Japanese cars, some openings, you could probably make this fit into like a heavy duty Ford, the old F-250s, F-350s and excursions from back in the day with just what you have here. For anything else, you're gonna need a dash kit to make this work. There is an instruction manual. That it will be handy if you don't know how to hook these kind of things up, but it follows most of your standard connections. Comes with two USB cables that plug in with a harness. One thing I want you to notice is that these two USB cables have different size harnesses. There's also a GPS antenna. Then we have this wire right here. This wire is important. This is for the backup camera. So there's your AV input for the backup camera. And also in this harness, one of these wires is a Bluetooth antenna and the other is a Wi-Fi antenna. So even if you don't plan to use the backup camera, you've still got to connect this harness. Next, we have the wire for the various AV inputs and output. It has an amp connect. So this is your amp turn on lead. The other harness also has an amp turn on lead. And so this has two of them. This one's labeled antenna. This one's labeled amp. This is strange. The industry standard is a single blue wire that can turn on the amplifier or turn on the power antenna. I'm not really sure why they felt the need to include two turn on leads in this unit. On the AV wires, what we have an aux right input and an aux left input. And there is a video input. It's labeled video input two. Then over here we have right out, left out, video in one and video out. So it's got a video out, a right out and a left out and the rest are all inputs. So it has two video inputs. That's kind of a problem. The industry standard is four outputs and the gold standard is six. Now this is of course a, 
an inexpensive entry level unit. I think it's about a hundred bucks and so it's okay just to have one. But if you're looking for something with lots of output channels, this is not for you. You got a total of three video inputs on this thing. And so if you really need lots of video inputs, I guess this is your device. So let's set all this aside. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab some of these little terminals right here. I'm gonna hook everything up to my bench power supply. We'll get it powered on, see how it works. This speaker wire is tiny, tiny, tiny. I have no idea what gauge that even is. It is extremely small. One of these is aluminum and the other is copper. The power and ground wires are a little bit bigger, but they're not copper, they're aluminum. What's the point of switching to a bigger wire if you're gonna switch to a conductor that can't carry as much current? Connection is pretty straightforward. Power connector goes in this first slot. The next connection is all of the RCA type connectors, AV inputs. Kind of impossible to hook them up wrong. They just all go in where they go in. The GPS antenna has a little nut on it there. I powered it up for the first time and logged onto my Google account off of camera. It took a couple of minutes for it to power up for the very first time. And logging into the Google account was kind of slow and cumbersome. I felt like the device just wasn't very fast. Like the processor is not some high-end speedy processor. Once it's all set up, it turned on pretty much instantly, which is what you would expect with a tablet. You just push a button and the tablet wakes up. That's how tablets work. This is after all, just an Android tablet with an amplifier attached to it. So we've got a clock. We've got a speedometer right here. So this thing I showed you earlier does have a GPS unit that you can plug into it. Over here is the music controls. You can go forward and backwards to track and select music. So if you push this, it plays music and goes to the music screen. Default is to play the music saved to the device. And this came with, of all things, a Madonna song on it. And I'm sure that Madonna is not gonna be happy to find out that this company has uh, taken one of her songs and put on all of their uh, devices and sent it out. Down here at the bottom, you've got a navigation button right there. And what you can do is set the navigation button to default to the map app of your choice. And the first thing I want you to notice is that it is pretty darn slow. I've, and you saw the load time on that. This was not a terribly fast load time. Okay, Google, navigate to five-star car stereo. And as you saw, it's pretty darn slow. As you can see, it's slow. If you have an Android phone or an iPhone, you know that your phone does this almost instantly. So this thing is not really <laughs> very fast and responsive. And so I'm not at all happy with the performance of, of this device. I just think the device is underpowered, uh, not enough processor power to do this. The music button, that will take you to their music app, which I just showed you, which automatically starts off playing this Madonna song. This is the radio button. Now, I found it very frustrating because it looks like a network button to me, but that's their radio button. And then there is a video button, and that brings you to some preloaded video. Now, I've got it set up where it will not play video while driving. To get access to the various apps, you just swipe to the left and you've got all the apps that you would expect with an Android phone. You can watch YouTube. You can do the, I downloaded the YouTube music app earlier. You can put the Gmail app on this and you can have access to your email. Now, one cool thing that we've got here that I want to show you is the phone link feature. And as you can see, it takes a long time for it to load. This is a very slow device. It seems underpowered. So what you've got are three options, Android USB, Android Wi-Fi, and iPhone Wi-Fi. So this is a mirroring app. So you can use this to mirror your phone and in essence, control your phone from this screen. This is as close as this device can get to an Android Auto or an Apple CarPlay setup. And here is the problem. Whether I try Android USB or Android Wi-Fi, in order to connect, I have to have an app and I've got to scan this QR code to get that app. That app is not on the Google Play Store. Now I don't have an iOS device, so I have no idea if they have an iOS app. Now you might be the kind of person that's perfectly okay with downloading apps from a third party source, but what you've got to remember here is that I can't recommend that you do that because of the possible dangers, picking up viruses, that kind of crap. And so that entire feature where it can mirror your phone by plugging into USB or doing it over Wi-Fi, that feature may as well not even exist. 
I mean, for goodness sakes, how hard is it to put an app in the app store? It's now the EQ function for this device is inside of its preloaded music app. There's not a separate app for the equalizer. If you're playing music not using this app, the EQ doesn't seem to affect the sound. At the very least, you can't adjust the EQ and hear a difference in the sound. So if you're playing music through the Bluetooth, this EQ doesn't seem to do anything. Even worse, if you're playing music through some other source like your own app that you've installed, because you can install any app you want because it is an Android tablet. If you go into this app in order to adjust the EQ, it'll stop playing the music you were playing and then play whatever is default loaded on the device. In this case, it's that Madonna song. And after tinkering with the device all day, I'm getting sick of hearing this Madonna song. Don't get me wrong, I'm a child of the 80s, I love Madonna, but I just don't want to hear the same Madonna song 40 times a day. <laughs> This is a big thumbs down. There should be a separate equalizer app or some kind of system-wide equalizer control. Now let's talk about that surround knob, that slider for the surround control. So the rear speakers on this thing really seem to be more like surround sound speakers. You've only got two functional channels of output, right and left, if you're just looking for a true stereo signal. And that's really frustrating because they added this feature to this app and the feature actually makes it less usable as a car stereo. Let's take a look at the settings for a second. You just swipe to the left and you don't go to settings. You swipe again and you go to car settings. Under the car settings, you can do things like change the radio region, adjust the steering wheel control, adjust the mirroring effect on the rear view camera, set it up so that you can watch videos while driving and several other features. There's a toggle switch so that you can watch videos while you drive. There's reversing lines for the backup camera. And also in here, you can change the navigation program. Now there's no way to change the default program for your music player. That's always seems to be stuck with the one that came with the system. You can change the brightness. You can change the screen saver, the wallpapers and the themes. That's all neat. But that's just all aesthetics that has no impact on the functionality of the device whatsoever. If you hit the little speaker icon though, you can actually do something. You can change some of the volume settings. These are just the volume settings for things like the ring volume and the Bluetooth volume. And you'll notice there is a balance. You can adjust the balance and there's no fader. As I said before, this is not a four channel output. The rear channels are surround channels. You only have control over right and left and there's no equalizer in this settings app. Let's give it a listening test before I give you my overall impression. I've got a song loaded up from the YouTube audio library. Library. Let's see how it sounds. So I'm going to call the sound good, but not great. There's not anything just jumping out at me that says, hey, this is not right. It doesn't sound like it's supposed to. That is, of course, at low volume. When the volume gets up, the, the highs begin to break up. And so it doesn't sound very good. There's definitely some listening fatigue when you get the volume turned all the way up. This is not something you want to use if you want something that's loud and clear at the same time. If it had a proper equalizer, you might be able to fix some of that, but it doesn't. It doesn't even have something as simple as a bass and treble control. At the very least on the main home screen, there should be a bass and treble control. As far as my overall impressions and recommendations, the main thing this unit has going for it is the price. It's basically an inexpensive entry-level Android tablet with an input-output section that you can mount inside of your dash. And so if what you want is an Android tablet in your car and you don't have much money to spend, this is the head unit for you. But what's the point in that? Most everybody's walking around with a smartphone in their pocket and you can just Bluetooth that smartphone to pretty much any head unit in the market these days. Other than being a little slow and clunky, the Android tablet functionality seems to be just fine. I like that it has the external GPS antenna, but what you've got to remember is you get what you pay for and where the unit really falls short is as an audio player. It seems to me they put a bunch of features in that you wouldn't really want in a hundred dollar head unit. It has all these AV inputs. Uh, someone who's going to need three is not going to be in the market for a hundred dollar head unit. Seems to completely miss the mark as far as where it should fit in the market. And they put all this money and energy and time and development into features that no one wants on a hundred dollar head unit, like a surround sound for the rear channels. For a hundred dollar head unit, people just want four channels of output so they can run their four door speakers in their car. Inside the equalizer section, it has that bass control. 
The manual says it's a subwoofer control. It is not a subwoofer control. It's just another channel of equalization in the inbuilt equalizer, which as I've already mentioned, is a pretty much useless equalizer. If you're gonna have a sub-level control, that sub-level control needs to control the outputs on the RCAs. It just needs to be a level control on those RCAs and it needs an active crossover so you can put that output right to your subwoofer. The other big problem is customer support. I had a couple of questions about this unit. I emailed the marketing contact that sent me out this unit. They never got back to me, which I think is a huge problem. I mean, if I'm out here doing a review of their product and I've got a bunch of questions and they're not gonna respond to me, uh, that's a big problem because I'm gonna tell you that they didn't respond and that's not something they want in a YouTube video talking about their product, but that's what they got because they didn't take the time to respond to my email. Well, ease go. I'm sorry to sh all over your head unit. Thanks for sending it out anyway. It's a do not recommend. Check out this video right here to see a head unit that I do recommend. And let me say thanks to all my patrons, especially $25 patron Dylan. I'll catch y'all on the next one. That's better. That's where it belongs.